Greetings! This is I, Tantus Nair of Enjokovic, your Lord Emperor here at the Chikovan Empire, and welcome! We're doing something a little bit more unusual that I used to do more of in the past. We're talking, well, I've done it before in the last year, Match of the Gathering lore. I don't do a lot of videos on lore of Magic Gathering. I used to do more of them. But I have liked revisiting different planes you could explore and talking about more that I talked about in the past. Because I did talk about some in some older videos you can check out on YouTube that are uh, of a quality. <laughs> I have to admit, my quality of videos has definitely changed a lot over the years, of course. And, uh, you know, so was the uh, you know, editing, all that kind of stuff, too. But if you're joining me, of course, right now, on Twitch. Hi Twitch, great to have you alive. Uh, thank you for following, really nice, just as a, if you already haven't. And of course, if you're joining me on YouTube, the, you know, normal things like, uh, like subscribe, ring the bell, all that kind of stuff, just would be great for support there too. And if you're on one side, go check out the other. So, have any of you ever, or know about, Chandelar? And my kind of question related to today is, did you play the Microporos? Magic Gathering game where we were introduced to Chandelar. Because I think that's the main place that people would know about Chandelar from. And it has shown up in various cards and places. Uh, M15, when they were doing their kind of history related things to the Planeswalkers, where they had Planeswalkers flip cards, introduced some Chandelar stuff between things like <coughs> Liliana. It showed up in March of the Machines. And it showed up in a number of other places links to Chandelar. So it is a plane that exists. And again, I talked about this in the past, but we're gonna kind of deep dive, kind of talk about it a little bit more. And I'm gonna talk about, at least today, the Microprose game. And I guess that's a great place to start out with all of this, is the game that, well, defined it all. And here's the cover to the game. Uh, this was the start of Chandelar. Uh, Microprose did a number of games and products related to Match of the Gathering in the late 90s. So, I mean, we're talking ages ago, okay? We're talking, this is early Magic the Gathering, you know? It would be... The original beta set came out in 83. And that was, like, kind of the first more wide release before Unlimited... Which also, which also came out in late 93. So we're talking Magic is four years old at most right now. And we're getting a computer game based on it. Now this game had a number of forms on it. I'll talk about what's in the game, what the history of the game, gameplay of the game. But in the game you basically play Magic the Gathering and build a deck. Um, it's actually kind of comparable to many like deck building games that you would play now, where you, like, go and fight people and you get stuff for it. Um, I've seen some people play through, like, the Game Boy games of the Pokemon trading card game, where you have a deck, you face against other people, and when you win, you get packs of cards. In a similar way, you beat people and you got cards for them. There's more details to the entire way of doing it, but you can truly kind of build up decks, you explore dungeons, which can get you <coughs> special cards... Uh, and eventually build these powerful decks to take on these powerful people controlling Chandelar. It was originally released in 90, 97 in April for the Windows 95 system. Um, and it was originally announced for MDOS, but we didn't see that. So the original then had, of course, your customizable deck, the campaign mode, um, a tutorial, and had 465 cards from mostly 4th edition with a few rare and famous cards from Limited and Arabian Nights thrown in. But they did have some expansions that they had. In, 90, in September of that year, we had the Spells of the Ancients, which had more cards from Antiquities and a sealed deck generator. And it was another 92 cards that was included into it. Uh, we had the Duels of the Planeswalker version that came out in February of 98. Um, it was another... 385 cards, including cards from Legends, and filling out some of those spaces that were there. And they had an option called Mana Link to play with other people online, which was really cool. So this is the first time you could build a deck and play someone online in Magic. It was part of this Duels of the Planeswalkers version of it. A Gold Edition was announced with a lot more that would have further cards from Legends and Dark and a lot of different things in 99 in August. But it never came about. 
The Gold Edition, which was talked about by Hasbro, but by the time owned Wizards, called for it. But Microprose ceased to exist in January 2001. The Gold Edition of the game never came about. There is a fan version of the game that includes a lot more cards that was came out uh, about, honestly, 14 years ago, with a lot of cards from Ice Age to Conflux, kind of filling in the gap for a lot of stuff that was missing. Um, but no complete set similar to the original game. It was basically, if you want to play an extended version of the game, you could get the kind of extended, a lot more card basis of things. It still has a lot of things. So again... The backstory of it will be pretty much the history of Chandelar when we talk about this. The canon history of Chandelar, I should really say. There are some differences between the history presented in the game, of course, and how it's presented in actual magic lore. But most of it kind of ends up being the same, that eventually these guild lords become corrupt and they rebel against them because they're under the influence of planeswalkers and trying to conquer the plane etc etc we'll talk about it all so yeah and the the character you're playing is someone that this character convinces that you know a powerful planeswalker we'll talk about a powerful being that we talk about has corrupted the plane, taken over their leaders, and, you know, uh, because it's got a artifact with a powerful other character we'll talk about set in it, and, you know, to go about destroying them, fighting them, you know, defeating them, saving Chandelar, etc., etc. Okay. <coughs> so that's the game in a nutshell. And this is what introduced us all to Chandelar. So that's really our origin of the entire plane, and since then it has been referenced in the many areas, more information has been developed, and the essence of what the plane is has been developed more. But we're starting here with this very early on game, and where we really weren't planes hopping necessarily. What did we have? Rabia, but it was only Arabian Nights set. We had like Legends, Antiquities, and even, even Antiqui Arabian Nights, kind of the definition of what it was didn't exist until later when it was more defined you know so this is an early time period where we don't have multiple planes like the way we do now in magic the gathering and this was another plane being introduced it was another plane in the multiverse very early on that we actually were exploring again like most early sets hint to or just are linked to directly dominaria it's all Dominaria for quite some time. So seeing another plane this early on in the creation of Magic in 97 is an important part of the entire thing. It goes to show the expansion of the game world was pretty, you know, important. I mean, <clears throat> we just had Visions. That came out in February of that year. That's, if you're unaware, that's very early on very early on but nonetheless we, we are we're definitely developing things in a way and getting storylines which are very interesting and important so we'll, we'll now talk about this again I think um, Homelands was the only other one other than this one that was on a different plane technically and even then, Homelands and Arabian Nights were the only two, and they weren't really defined as their own planes until later. Homelands was, Homelands is our first point in time where we're kind of getting into somewhere else. And then it wasn't until, honestly, we get to Wrath, and the Wrath series, that we really get into another plane, and planes hop. Let's talk Chandelar and some basics about what Chandelar is move over here this one um, so Chandelar is an interesting plane because it's technically a rogue plane what do I mean by a rogue plane well most planes in the multiverse of Magic the Gathering have almost like an address a position a course maybe they move but they move with like you know a rotation or an order 
you know, so it's like if I know how that plane moves as a planeswalker or planar traveler, I basically have an address. That address might be a moving address, but I like, you know, sort of like you can do some calculations. Think about like in our solar system, the planets move around. We can still send stuff to other planets because we can do the math. Or if you're <laughs> more like on a world, the address down the street or something like that, if it's a steady position. This one doesn't. It doesn't have a steady course, it doesn't have a steady position, it just kind of moves about. And it's a relatively small plane in comparison to many others. But the other thing that is, it's incredibly rich with mana, the energy which fuels magic in the Magic the Gathering universe. You have to think that I tap my lands for mana, yeah, there's an incredible amount of mana that just purviews Chandelar. It's, it's so prevalent that it's almost it's in itself sentient and even the most common of people use minor spells in chandelar for everyday convenience so this is truly a magic world as much as like you've got places like dominaria and um alara and you know originally mirrored in and before it became new phyrexia and a lot of other places that are mad have, have mana or have like magic going around you have common people look at Ravnica, there are common people that don't use magic. There are plenty of important people that do use it and manipulate it in certain ways. And again, <clears throat> this comes back to Chandelar. It has so much magic, so much mana, everybody gets it. But that's why everybody desires Chandelar in a way. Because it has so much mana, so much power. Let's talk about the basic storyline and history of Shandalar now. Oh, we do. This is the, the freeing a place from the control of the dark wizards from the uh, video game. I thought it would be appropriate here for the early on. Because most of the storyline here does lead to the storyline of the game. When I get to Obnixilis, the Chain Veil, and the Fall of the Guilds, that's when we have the game. The game leads to the fall of the guilds. So up until now, we're going to start talking about the backstory of Chandelar as a world, and Chandelar as it is in the game, officially. So Chandelar is alone most of the time. Again, it's that thing that it is a plane that doesn't have, it's not easy to find. So unlike a lot of other planes where there have been planar portals, planar connections in various time periods, eventually planeswalkers took and still visit it. Now in the storyline, it's easier for planar travel again. You know, things have happened to the multiverse that have made, for a while, made planar travel difficult except for planeswalkers. But now <coughs> natural portals and things like that can exist again. You know, we're back to that storyline that was actually in early magic. In early magic, for a time period, people could travel between planes very easily. So it's interesting to say that Chandelar always has never had those connections. It doesn't have natural planar portals. It doesn't have people visiting it. It's had some couple people in Planeswalker that have managed to find it. Ancient wizards desired the magical energy so much. They were able to create creatures of pure mana. Um, the creatures in this ancient land and their descendants among the great uh, dragons of Chandelar still roam the land. So that's an important part about Chandelar's history, is that ancient and powerful wizards that began to manipulate the mana energy created a lot of the major mythological creatures upon Chandelar, and those beings were originally created of pure mana. Um, the other unusual characteristic of Chandelar is that magic is indeed commonplace, like I talked about. Um, most powerful magic still requires you to be some kind of powerful wizard to learn about something. But again, like, yeah, your everyday person has some everyday spells. Now, I'll talk in depth about the natural planes, the planeswalkers from Chandelar towards the end of this uh, entire stream slash video. But Kenan Sharamal is a, a planeswalker on Chandelar and one from here. So we'll start with him. He was one of the few on the plane that knew about the existence of the multiverse. Remember, it goes both ways in a way. Because Chandelar is a rogue plane, it's the same thing of like, 
if my destination is constantly moving in an erratic way, I can't trace a line to somewhere else also. <coughs> so, Chandelar had prospered up until now. Charmel, as one of the few planeswalkers from this place, knew that it wouldn't always be this way, especially if other planeswalkers learned about it. So it was during the time of the Shard of the Twelve Worlds. It was a big thing that happened during that time period uh, related to the Ice Age and what happened, and it was post the Antiquities War. So this, this stuff that happens on, that's related to fucking Dominaria's history. Shandawar weaved in and out of the protective barrier because of its rogue nature. So that's an important thing here. Because of the nature of Chandelar, the Shard of Twelve Worlds, which separated at the twelve like core worlds of the multiverse, there, there's more to it than that. But the basic idea was it separated twelve planes from the multiverse and kind of, you know, it, it was a side effect of the Silex Blast in Dominaria. And um, Chandelar moved in and out of it. Planeswalkers um, used Chandelar as a route to escape from the Shard. That's an important thing. They could go to Chandelar when it weaved in and leave it during that time. Um, we know of three Planeswalkers that actually took advantage of uh, Feralin, Sev Savit, and Leshrac. Um, Lim Duel, who was a powerful necromancer, was brought along to Chandelar with Leshrac. So he brought one of his minions with him. And they made the decision, Leshrac and Limduel, to conquer Chandelar. To take it over. Karen Sarmal, the planeswalker here, <coughs> mounted a defense. And of course, the other two were involved. <coughs> Sorry, my cough. I should have muted it. Tried to. Too late. Mm. Farallon uh, was killed with a summoned astral dragon and routed the others. Limdul did manage to injure Saramal. Limdul Saramal disappeared. His followers captured and beheaded Limdul, and both were assumed dead. So you know, Farallon was killed. Leshek and Sev Sabbat were driven off. Limdul Saramal both dead theoretically. Um, but yeah, and then. Chandelar was again used as an important thing because on Dominaria, Frailies, who ended the Shard of Twelve Worlds using the world spell, you know, did so using Chandelar. It ended the Ice Age, it shattered the Shard of Twelve Worlds, it opened up travel between the planes more easily again. Because remember, the Shard of Twelve Worlds also, these are the these were the core 12 worlds that have the most influence on the multiverse. Dominaria is an important plane because effects that have hit Dominaria actually have ripples throughout the multiverse. Keep that in mind. That's one thing we've talked about in previous planes. It's like a key plane in the multiverse's makeup, basically. Chandelar, not outside that, but because of its unique nature, was basically used to help fix things. Now, let's talk about Lim Duel because he ain't dead. Turns out, beheading just doesn't get rid of this man. So, Limdul, back in action! Without his Planeswalker Master, and this is 12 years now after the Shard's been opened up, Limdul's back, he's got an undead army. Um, same goal as his Master. He wants to seize the Manor Rich Plane. He might not be a Planeswalker, but with the amount of power here, he could become really powerful. So city after city was destroyed, uh, of years of war, and only one city remained. Uh, Ardiston. <clears throat> it was the last refuge against him. And so, he began his siege on this place. This would make him conquer Chandelar. But Charmel wasn't dead. He had other plans. He'd been training two adepts. Azar, and an unrevealed one. So we only know about Azar. We don't know about his other, um, w you know, apprentice. We might never. Depends on, you know, how much we visit Rishandalar. Uh, hey, you know, I'll just note Rabia scale, uh, seven. Um, so, uh, 
definitely um that one is it's it's, it's unlikely to return but uh possible the environment comes right so you know things like you know we talk about chandelier could come up you know we could mention it before but diving into depths learning about the other apprentice who knows but during the siege uh Saruman basically said and consulted patience his students weren't ready to take on Lib's duel Azur couldn't witness the suffering and the fall of the city without doing something he left the hidden sanctuary went to the city's defense um and learning about this Saruman and the other apprentice went to the aid Star Azur had stolen a spell designed to target the necromancer spirit imprison it within his body um that Saruman designed and drawing the power to erect a great barrier around Chandelar, much akin to the Shard. So basically, he created a circle of protection, Azar cast the spell, but Limdul was prepared and waited nearby. Uh, Limdul had been beheaded, but survived by transferring his soul into another body. He planned to transfer into Azar's body. When the spell was complete, Limdul initiated his counter, but the combined spells had an unforeseen effect. Both spirits were trapped in Azar's body. So originally he was going to try to trap Limdul in his body with a spell, but Limdul also wanted to use the spell to take over his body. But now two souls were warring for control. Saruman buried uh, the body, and the Great Barrier had come into existence. Um, but it depended on the confinement of Limdul. So hey, the war with Limdul is over. You know we've gotten some semblance of safety, and there is a barrier separating out Chandelar. Chandelar is again alone. The other apprentice of Sharmal's became known as the Guardian. Basically, Sharmal put all his effort into that, and he would become the protector of Chandelar, or they would become the protector of Sharmal. Sharmal vanished. Uh, the Guardian became the, basically, de facto protector of Chandelar in place of Sharmal. The Guardian established the Five Guilds of Magic, responsible for teaching and guarding the uses of the Five Mana Colors. Here we go into a problem that eventually be corrupted. Here's the guilds. Basically, again, you fight against the masters of the guild because they're corrupted during the game, but here we are establishment of them. <clears throat> the guild lord of each guild was determined by great context. Contest. Contest. Um, and each a new one would be selected with the passing of the previous one. The problem then became within Azur's body, combat against Limdul didn't go well. Azur was too inexperienced. Um, Limdul emerged in the body, the de facto winner, to continue his campaign against Shadalar. But this time there was more resistance because of the five wizard schools. Um, this was the Wizards' War. So before, while Shadalar didn't really have a defense against Limdul, now the Guardian had created one. Um, during the war, the Black Guild Lord was killed before Limdul was finally defeated. The Guardian removed Limdul's soul, soul from Azra's body and imprisoned it in a magic artifact, keeping the Great Barrier intact. Azra's body, though, was now empty. It had been exposed to too much ma uh, magic. The soul was gone from it. However, though, because it had been exposed to too much body, it rose as a Lich Lord, Skava Slan and took command of the Black Guild and ruled it for ages while their guild, wars, guild lords came and went. So, yeah. <clears throat> but there's, for now, our end of Lim Duel. We go to this person here, who is the Planeswalker Az Azakon. Now, as much as there was a great barrier... Azakon, who was a powerful planeswalker, noticed the emanation because of those wars. He found the Great Barrier. Now the Guardian was aware that Azakon was there. Um, he had repelled other planeswalkers attempting to physically come through. But Azakon was different. This was because he was able to ma manipulate things through the barrier. The current guild lords at the time, including the Lich Lord and the other uh, four, 
rose up and struck down the Guardian. It was the manipulations of Azrakhan in the guise of a benevolent advisor. He managed to get influence within Chandelar and set things apart this way. So he then ta tasked the Guild Lords. He convinced them that to rule Chandelar, one wizard must cast the spell of domination, which grants the caster immortality. It was untrue. It was meant to seek out the source of the Great Mar Barrier, the artifact with Limzul's spirit contained, and destroy it, basically. The spell of Dominion. So, there is some question about how everything ended here, but we know from the Microprose game, because this is the opening of the game, that you're going against the, the you know, guild leaders, defeating them. Basically, the lone finger between Chandelar and its doom, and theoretically, this lone figure, or whatever representation in actual lore happens, defeats them. Azrakhan is defeated, uh, the guild lords are destroyed, the guilds fall. But this becomes the point in time where we have to talk about the, you know, some other related things here. Uh, oh, whoops, wrong order. That one's the one I want now. I misordered them. And some other histories when it comes to Chandelar and what we know about it. So, we come into modern magic history. And I mean relatively modern within the last century. Because this is... I could talk about the magic... I think I talked about the magic timeline in an older video. It's long. So we, we're talking thousands of years have gone by at this point in time. So the guilds are gone. But some point in this time period, the Great Barrier fails. Now, could this be related to during the time spiral block when time was being messed with? Where, you know, Planeswalker Sparks were uniquely affected and changed? That perhaps something happened because Limduel returned to Dominari during that time. Could there be two Limduels? That might have had an effect. But I'm only speculating because it is an interesting fact that there was, for a brief time, two limb duels. But regardless, Planeswalkers were able to return to Chandelar. The barrier had fallen. Slivers began stirring in the Caledonian wilds that hadn't existed there before. New nations rose on the plain. And of course, a number of individuals visited. Obnixilis came, and the chain veil here cursed them. Eventually, Lana Vess came and claimed the Chain Veil for herself for some period of time, which was an ancient artifact from old days within Chandelar, probably predating a lot of this history. I'll talk about some individuals, some beings that live in Chandelar here a little later in some ancient uh, civilizations, because those can relink, uh, link to a lot of the powerful magical artifacts and things like the Chain Veil, which originated here and the powerful Ona uh, Onake civilization that once existed on Sh Chandelar. And of course it was part of Limduel's essence that related to getting Loana to claim the Chains Veil, and honestly speaking, we can only assume that the ring was eventually destroyed. Um, I think it actually is destroyed? Yeah. So, yeah. Because Limduel had contaminated the artifact, was influencing Azakon too. Um, so, yeah. It, it, it basically, Limduel managed to become part of the Chain Veil, a little section of him. Part of it became the Raven Man, which haunted her. There's a lot about it. Limduel's history, crazy kind of there in the side, you know, we're not going to talk about Limduel's history too much more than this. This is the history of Chandelar, but just know the big thing here is planes opened up, uh, you know, we're post-guilds, 
it's repairing itself. The world is coming about. New nations are rising up in place of this power sources that could deal with issues that are going on, etc., etc. All right. One last visit to Chandelar historically because I, I spilled the beans with this one. Hey, there's the invasion of Chandelar. For you guys, it would be a little more like this way to read it. But for me, it's this way, uh, you know, which leads to Leyline Search. Yeah, which is an important thing here. <coughs> the Frexians, unfortunately, because they are beings of metallic augmentations, didn't do well on Chandelar. The wild magic of Chandelar's plane is too much. Their natural of organic, because they are part organic, part metallic, their organic portions absorbed too much mana and over and basically shredded them. And of course, they meant uh, like, an important part there is the chain veil, which had been locked away on Ravrica since it was claimed from Liliana, and it was seen to be too evil and powerful since she had used it. In, I think the last time was War of the Spark, Realm Breaker, spreading it out, unleashed it. And the Unaki woke up. They helped defend the world against the Phyrexians who were having a tough time, but the Unaki are returned. So, Chandelar, of course, is recovering from the invasion. Honestly speaking, we don't know what state it's in. But from the information from this card here, we can easily tell um, it didn't go too bad. Didn't go too bad. A lot of their augmentations were stripped away, leaving them weakened and open up to defenders. And the Onaki, well, those that are returned from the lost civilization, they are powerful and dangerous. They were originally slaughtered for a reason, which no one knows. Was it because they learned some secrets? Was it because they became the villains? Was it because some kind of villainous force wanted to get rid of them? Well, that's impossible to say. But let's talk about the Onaki. We should. Just a little bit. The Onaki. They're ogres. Which, a lot of times, ogres in a lot of media... Uh, let me actually switch to this one because it's a little bigger. In a lot of media are, well, idiots? Stupid? The thing about the Onaki is they are smart. They're brilliant. They understood ways to manipulate the mana of Chandelar in incredible ways. Things like the Chain Veil were created by them. They created many artifacts... And yes, they delved deep into terrible powers that they probably shouldn't have, which maybe led to the corruption of their species and the legend eventual downfall. Downfall. But some ancient and powerful artifacts throughout Chandelar are created by them. Their history is important. But we also know they were slaughtered in near nothing in one night. One. That's an interesting thing packed about it. It took one night to slaughter them. And it was a magical spell cast by an unknown uh, source. Their spirits still haunt things like the chain veil, and their bodies are in some of their deep catacombs. But we now know that some dormant ones have been woken up. So certainly there's an opening for some storylines on Chandelar. I wouldn't mind if we revisit Chandelar in a Magic Gathering set. Hey, look at this. The Onaki are late. Now another group is the Xanthrid. Xanthrid is a major demon that's worshipped and followed by many uh, people and creatures on Chandelar. It's a probably big influence. So we'll talk about the Xanthrid a little bit. Well, I'll show them off here. Uh, so that's a Xanthrid demon. Um... Unlike some other demon travelers, like the uh, Kapathed, uh, the, one of the demons that Lilana Vest made a contract with, which sent her there to get the chain veil. Um, and those greater demons or things like that, 
this is a major demon that has a lot of influence over the um, Chandelar still. So we now have, of course, the various civilizations on San Chandelar post uh, the guilds uh, that probably survived relatively well against the Phyrexian invasion and repairing. But now we have the reawakened Onake, uh, those that are remaining of it, who are those the ones that dove deep, too deep, you know, into deep magics? Are they of terrible power? They've always been project pro projected as somewhat of dangerous or villainous or evil quotations, but I feel like it's eh, it's muddled, as most things in magic. It's honestly muddled. Even the villains tend to have some muddled ways about them sometimes. Huh. All right. Let's talk about some known locations on here, which most of which we know very little. It's the unfortunate thing that we know names and places and some variable things about them, but we don't know a lot about places because we haven't visited them. There's uh, Altak, home of the Blood Seekers. Uh, the Broken Barrens, attractive barren vol uh, volcanic land. Of course, the various catacombs, like the Onaki Catacombs or the Onaki Tombs. Uh, the Eastern Sea, which I actually do have. Uh, it's a body of water on the rocky coast of Chandelar. It's a location uh, from some of the storylines. Um, and, and this is where uh, Limdul trapped uh, uh, Carmel Sa uh, Saramal for a period of time. Um, it's also where uh, an evolved race of slivers inhabit the scrap, uh, scrap. So, yeah. The Chandelarian slivers. Anyway. Uh, the Aloran Wilds is a big wilderness. The Evos Islands is a remote island where swift formal Avon enforced the will of ruling sphinxes. Kalgor is a nation for its marauding, feared for its marauding hordes. Kalonia, also known as a forest, known as the Colonian Wilds, plagued by hydras and tuskers. Of course, then they're <coughs> connected to that on the shores of... Me and myself for that cough. Woo! That was a good one. The scrap is within the um, Colonian Wilds, where the Sliver as well, uh, who do threaten to convolve the world. Um, um, the human-like brood are... Um, um, the the, the the insect ins, insect like brood and primes which are humanoid exist both here uh, so interestingly enough there's more humanoid versions of slivers that exist within Chandelar <clears throat> maybe affected by Chandelar's magic um, unsure where they came from or stuff like that they're you know it's it's slivers um, that's an entirely different can of worms to go into but know that they're there and they still are there, theoretically. The Capsho Sea, ruled by Talarand, um, who uh, is a legendary card, and home of uh, <coughs> Amphinan, um, which are a type of salamander. <coughs> Sorry. Man. Um, they're partially aquatic humanoids from Shandwar. I'm about to mute for a second and drink some water and cough a little bit. Of course, near in the capture sea is the Mistral Isle. Lesh is a trade city positioned as one of the most uh, vital trade rivers. It's ruled by merchant guilds along with a fair deal of the city's underworld, named after Leshrac. Martine is a coastal city uh, uh, near a river and Mistral Isle. The river is possibly the Mar River, but we're unsure. Um, there's, of course, the Netherlands. The Nether lands. Uh, it's near the city of uh, Ardestin. 
It's part of Thrun. Uh, the Osai Desert, which is also near um, Ardestin, where Osai Vultures come from. Uh, with the burned sands of El Amon near it. Uh, the Shadowwood. Of course, Thrun, the kingdom, uh, where Ardestin is the once capital of the plain. We'll talk about Ardestin in a second. And Caracas, an ancient city on the coast, famed for its domes. Uh, it was guarded by war clamp mastiffs and destroyed once more by juggernauts. And of course, Fleet Rock is in that area. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, it was found. Uh, our destiny was found by Ken and Shamal, um, and that's the one that was attacked during Thinduul's uh, war. Uh, Tonamur, a great ocean surrounding the main continent. Um, uh, Sunari, the des desert citadel. Ur, a famous obelisk. Uh, Valkas, uh, the grandest mountains on the plain. Uh, there's a nearby village of the same name, and Telfer Peak. Home of a fierce dragon. Now there are some of these areas, different areas in the microprose game. So it's sort of like there are a bunch of locations mentioned there, um, and there is some variability in the location names between it um, because they're like randomly net, uh, created names for places kind of that exist within it. So <clears throat> the thing is, we know about a lot of these places from other sources of lore, um, like some of the comics and book series, uh, of course the cards and things like that, but like the game itself did establish some things that sort of exist. I'm not going to go through the full list of locations in the Microprose game. Just know that they do exist and, <clears throat> you know, we, we can kind of leave it at that um, for now. <coughs> so here's Kenan Shema, our main planeswalker. Um, I'm not going to go into details about him too much. Um, he's supposed to be the author of the Book of Rings. He was a pre-mending pre uh, planeswalker. The bending took place during the time spiral entire thing that was going on. Yeah, there we go. Um, <coughs> Pre-revisionist, um, there was some information that was different. But again, um, since the Great Barrier, um, it's unknown whether transferring the last of his power to his guardian, his successor, killed him, or, or what happened to him. He's kind of gone from the history books at that point in time. I talked about a bunch of him. We're not going to need more to go into canon too much more. Uh, but we will talk about uh, another planeswalker from Chandelar here. Um, uh, <coughs> Boragor. So there's another planeswalker native to Chandelar. Um, he was sent to hunt. Uh, he was one of the hunters sent by Vronos to capture Guruk, uh, and was the second to be killed by him. Um, which uh, Vronos, it's part of the Guruk storyline. So yeah. Uh, <coughs> So, yep, there's there's a bunch of stuff on that one, but um, he's he was a necromancer hermit that worshipped Zathrid. Um, so he was summoned by Vronos to Innistrad, with some other pack planeswalkers, to capture uh, Garuk, uh, to bring Garuk to Vasi to be cured. Uh, <clears throat> they located him in Alora. A, a uh, Baragor began performing a ritual. Uh, for the upcoming confrontation. Um, he was in the middle of his ritual um, and, you know, fell before his axe before he could finish his ritual. So he was a character that existed and died. Um, and this is, you know, we're in the Mending Era, but we're before War of the Spark kind of time period. So, yeah. Um, but he was from Chandelar and the Necromancer that worshipped uh, a Zathrid. So, <clears throat> all right. Um, I think that's about all I want to talk about for Chandelar for today. And yeah, it was I hopefully a lot more than I talked about before. I did talk about a lot of things. I probably summarized a lot of these things before. But I wanted to go in a little bit more depths about everything related to Chandelar. And there's new stuff that's happened 
technically in the last bunch of years, we did get a lot more, you know, idea of the locations. You know, we got things like we have the Onake Ogre from M21. That's after I talked about it. I showed that off. Um, <clears throat> we, have, we have a legendary from uh, M15 that was already out there. That was an Onake ancient. But again, a, a, a lot of cards and stuff has come out since then, and storylines related to Shinlar has existed. But I think also going more into depths about a lot of what I talked about before was interesting. Chandelar is a really cool idea for a lot of things. It's an interesting plane. I really love it. I love, actually, the storyline that was told by Microprose. Microprose told a really interesting tale and set forth this really cool history about what had happened in Chandelar, what helped define Chandelar. You know, they did a really good job of doing that. And I think it's one of those important things to kind of say that, yeah, they did. Chandelar is amazing place it's really neat it's got a lot of deep history about it that could equal to really cool storytelling if someone in a, wants to, in a magic set wants to pick it up will it be picked up it's not a never it's certainly much more likely that someone in wizards will want to use chandelar for something um even if it's mild maybe for like a commander set or something Hard to say nowadays with a lot of the products coming out. We might be years before we did it. But we saw Kamigawa come back in a really awesome way. And no one thought Kamigawa would come back. And people would love Kamigawa to come back now. After what has happened to it. You know, uh, Neon Dynasty made Kamigawa a place people wanted to go to. It changed it. And so, the right... Visit to Chandelar could do the same. Like, you know, <clears throat> again, Kamigawa's current Rabia scale is four. Likely do it again. Um, but there are a few issues that do guarantee it. But, yeah. It was so bad before. The old Rabia scale for Kamigawa was like, never again. So Chandelar at a 7 means there's the possibility we might not. There is that possibility that we may never see Chandelar again. There is also that slight, deep hint that we'll visit it one more. A land of magic. A land of mystery. Of deep history. Where many amazing things happen. And it is this interesting idea. It's the rogue plane. It's a place outside the purview of normal travelers. So yeah, certainly in the new sets where we're not seeing as many planeswalkers and they've taken a step back from planeswalkers and even planar travelers, it might be an interesting place that's a place on its own. And maybe because of the invasion, it's a little easier to find Chandelar now. Could be stories like that. Yonaki are woken up again. There's so much potential for stories. I would love to see them visited again with something interesting. I think that's the thing is, as much as revisiting planes is cool, when they visit places to new stories that are interesting, it's wonderful. And I would only hope that we see Chandelar again someday. And I hope this second video, honestly, that I've done on it will, you know maybe spark some kind of interest in it a little bit more. It's a really cool idea, and I actually would recommend, if you want to play some classic Magic the Gathering, the in if you can get a copy of it uh, somewhere, uh, the Microprose game does seem fun. Um, I, I, I ended up uh, doing a little bit of it in the past, and uh, did see, you know, years ago, some playthroughs of it, um, which was really interesting to see. I saw someone play through the updated version of it. That was neat. Um, but it does introduce you to not only Chandelar, but, you know, it's a it's class, it's playing magic. It is. And building your own deck and finding cards and all these kind of interesting things. And, yeah, it's kind of clunky and kind of old, but those games sometimes work, especially games like this, I think, work pretty decently. Anyway, I think I'll leave it here. If you want to see more, I'll probably do more Magic the Content, the Gathering content in the future, visit more planes. I've been enjoying these planar guides for now. That's probably what I'll do for a little bit. 
Uh, but I'll certainly visit a lot of other stuff in the future, um, other tabletop stuff. And if you want to check out other tabletop stuff, you want to check out live when I'm on Twitch. It's Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Tuesdays, Thursdays, early to mid-afternoon, depending on life schedule. I try from between 1 and 2. Doesn't always happen. Life has been pretty busy the last uh, couple of months, so if I get between 1 and 2, it's been lucky. Um, Saturdays around 11, earlier in the morning, because of scheduling. And I have a live play of some Pathfinder. So if you want to see me run a role-playing game with some friends and have a really great time, Crimson Queen, every Wednesday at 9 p.m., discussing tabletop. We talk about news of the week in tabletop, from RPGs to magic, other collectible card games. Saturday, 6 p.m., check it out. That's a live. All my tabletop stuff goes up on YouTube. So if you don't want to join us live, you can wait a few days, and then you can check it out yourself. Usually slightly edited. And of course, uh, I do other streams on Twitch, but I, I don't know if you're here for the tabletop. If you're here for mostly me like chat and game and all that kind of stuff, I do some of that too. I do do that too. And of course, again, uh, <clears throat> all this up the you know video game and stuff goes up on YouTube, um, so you can always check it out there. All the tabletop stuff. And I'll, I also have social media stuff, Discord, Twitter.com. Check those out. Uh, that's schedules, life thoughts, occasional cat pictures for my kittens, that kind of stuff. Anyway. I'm going to get going. I hope you all enjoyed. Maybe we'll visit Chandelar again someday. And if not, you know, I recommend, you know, it's a good influence for, you know, a tabletop role-playing game. They've done that with Magic Other Worlds and stuff like that. And Chandelar might be really cool to check out. Hint, hint, uh, nudge, nudge. Just saying. Wink, wink. Anyway, until the next time we talk about tabletop, Magic the Gathering, anything else, I bid all of you out there a deep and wonderful. Farewell.